get started. Um, so this is going to be a tutorial for Wolf and Project M. I'm going to do my best to uh, cater to people who are new to the game, especially at first when I'm talking about the basics of the game, and then I'll try to move into more advanced stuff. Um, so if you're new to Project M in general, um, it has uh, very similar, if not the same, mechanics to Melee. That was kind of the intent, was to make Brawl into a game that has all the, the cool new stages and characters of Brawl, but also uh, has the, the fast-paced and fun gameplay of Melee. And so they did a pretty good job of it. Um, so that means all your basics, uh, melee, advanced techniques, which would be uh, short hop, fast fall, L canceling. Um, everything that comes with shine, um, like wave shines, obviously regular wave dashing, um, shine turnarounds, stuff like that. All of that comes with, uh, with Project M just inherently with the engine. So with all of that stuff, uh, you can already see that Wolf starts moving a lot faster. Um, so you definitely want to have uh, those those same movement options that you would learn in Melee down um, when you're when you're learning to play Wolf. He is essentially a different type of spacey. He's a little bit more similar to Falco than he is to Fox, but he's totally unique from either Falco or Fox. So. Don't try to play him with the mindset that you're playing a Fox or Falco clone at all, because it's really, really different. Um, so yeah, aside from getting those basic movement options down, um, we can look at some of Wolf's uh, specific aerials um, that you end up uh, using during the shuffle, which short hop, short hop fast fall, L canceling refers to. Um, this is Wolf's back air. Definitely has the best range of all his aerials. Um, and it has pretty good knockback as well. But uh, I think that the, the most effective way to actually use this aerial, um, unless you're using it while retreating, obviously, in which case you can just use it like a normal back air. The best way to use it, in my opinion, is to do what's called a reverse jump. And this is an advanced tech that actually wasn't in Melee. Um, it's actually something that they kept in from Brawl. So you can be running one direction, and then right before you jump, you just turn around and then jump. It's like a free pivot, basically, that you don't need to actually time the pivot for. Um, you just get an automatically turn around jump. So in my opinion, when you're using Bear as an approach, you almost need to do this turn around jump. Um, in order to because you keep your momentum going forward a little bit as well so if you see that that definitely gives you a great approach option with wolf um that you can space very well uh nair is definitely not quite the same level of useful as fox and falco's sex kick nairs wolf's got this little roll um it can be decent for stuff like shield pressure since it is multi-hit, but it's very low priority. Like those hits, those hits won't cut through very much, um, very often. So the way I think that you should actually use a uh, neutral air is as a combo continuer. When your opponent's right in the air, you can kind of carry them down with this neutral air and then immediately shine or something like that to continue the combo. So that's the way I prefer like using uh prefer using there. Um, most of the time, like I said, occasionally at lower percents, you can do stuff like shine pressure with Nair and stuff like that. This is very easy for them to, to get away from. Um, so that's his Nair. We also have up air. Um, and that, that hitbox is a little bit deceiving. That hitbox actually goes a little bit further than the little white line that you see come up. It goes a little bit further than that. So. Up air is really good. Uh, they'll be sent a different direction based on here. Let me try to pause it at the right time. They'll be sent a different direction based on where you hit them. If you hit them with, uh, it just depends on the angle of where Wolf is hitting you. Um, if you hit them at the very start of the up air, um, <clears throat> then it'll hit them forward in front of Wolf. 
if you hit them with the end of the back hair toward the back, like with the back of his paw, then that'll hit them behind you. So by using that properly, you can definitely do some interesting stuff um, with Wolf's up air. Um, it's also probably his best comboing aerial. There's a lot of strings where you can just kind of keep them up in the air with repeated up airs like this, and then finish off with a spike or something like that. So uh, that's definitely an excellent way to continue combos with Wolf. Um, in addition to that Nair situationally, it's just when they're above you, pretty much up air is your only option most of the time. We also have Wolf's Spare. Now, this move is kind of crazy. Um, first of all, you can auto-cancel it, just like you could in Brawl. So, I'm not L-canceling this. Um, and by the way, just general tip for those of you that are new to Project M. When you successfully L-cancel something in Project M, your character will briefly flash white for a second. And that tells you that you've got the L-cancel. Here it is. If your character flashes white, you know that you actually nailed the L-cancel. So, it's cool that they have that little indicator for when you're first learning. But as you can see here, when I do the auto cancel fair, I'm not flashing, but that's because my fair actually ends before I before I land, and so I don't need to L cancel this. Now that's not super super useful. It can be useful. Um, fair's main use is as a killer, but you need to you need to figure out the sweet spot. Let me try to point out where the sweet spot is. The sweet spot is basically where these little extra white lines are coming out of the main arc of the hitbox. You see those little extra few white lines right there? That's essentially where the hitbox is. It's in front of Wolf and above him a little bit. So you really have to get used to that. It's a very strange hitbox or uh, sweet spot in my opinion. Um, but once you get used to it, it's an extremely... It's definitely uh, has better knockback than most of his other uh, kill aerials. Which would basically just be back air, honestly. But it definitely has better back, uh, knockback than uh, bear. And a lot of the times when you set up for a situation that would lead into a quest combo into side B, you, but but they end up too close, you can usually follow up with a fair in most of those situations. So, And a uh, kind of trickier use that I haven't myself perfected yet for Wolf's Fair is actually as a combo continuer. If you purposely get the Sour Spot, they don't go anywhere with Wolf's Fair, and you can potentially continue combos that way. Not um, something I super recommend since it's kind of hard to um, get the hang of doing that, and then it kind of, it might mess with your sweet spotting if you learn how to purposely hit the sour spot as well. But definitely have some potential there with continuing combos uh, with sour spot wolf fair. So keep that in mind as well. So <clears throat> that covers all his aerials except for the best one, which is his down air, aka the spike. Um, this single move might be my bread and butter for Wolf, honestly. Um, starting pressure, continuing combos, any of the above, uh, that down air is really amazing for Wolf. Awkward Turtle, 311 donated $5 for one of my favorite players. Thank you, Awkward Turtle. Um, much appreciated, dude. Thank you so much for the $5 donation. We put you on there. Um, and I'm glad to hear that I'm one of your favorite players, man. That honestly means a lot to me. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream, and thank you for the donation. So, yeah, um, Down Air has a ton of hit stun. It'll also have a ton of st stun if you hit their shield. So pretty much, if you L cancel a Down Air, you're safe to, sh to shine afterward, almost every time. I can't remember a situation where my Down Air connected to either their shield or actually their body and then the shine didn't follow up successfully so this is kind of like if wolf had a pillar this would be it it's not quite the same as falco's pillar um because wolf shine will actually send them at an angle so that's the biggest key um let's talk about that briefly as well that's the biggest key difference between wolf shine compared to fox and falco's if anything, it's a little bit closer to Falco's because it's more of a combo continuer than like a get off me or uh, or like spiking move off the stage, obviously. But um, they definitely go at an angle a little bit, obviously depending on DI. But with no DI, they go at an angle, about a 45 degree angle up and in front of Wolf. Um, so Falco, you know, with no DI, they would generally just go straight above Falco. So it makes the combos interesting. Um, it makes you have to read the eyes a little bit better and move around back left and right more 
with your combos, but Wolf definitely has all the tools with his moves to be able to continue combos regardless. Um, and so, as I said, guys, with the dare, it's really fast, too. Um, it's it's kind of like a falcon dare where it has that slight delay, but there's not as much of a delay as on the falcon dare. So once you get used to that little startup timing, you can pretty much consistently hit this uh, every time. And uh, like I said, guys, that's my favorite aerial of wolves by far. Obviously, it's also a meteor off the stage. Uh, pr people are pretty good at meteor canceling it these days, but I love going for the double dip <laughs> and connecting it. Uh, which is, you hit them with the meteor and then you just immediately hit them again. Very risky, because you're using your second jump, but if it connects, then you're good. If it doesn't connect, then you're probably dead. <sighs> so, I appreciate that, Nikki. What up, Dark Lava? Thank you guys for tuning in. So, uh, that's basically Wolf's aerials. Um, and through those, you get most of Wolf's uh, combo game. And, Aerials plus shine make up most of Wolf's combo game. You're going to be carrying characters across the stage with up airs and down airs and uh, occasional nares. Maybe finishing them with fair. And uh, again, I, I described a good use of back air with that turnaround jump. I personally am not the best uh, wolf at using back air effectively. So you definitely want to experiment with back air to figure out what works for you. Um, like I said, if you're using it as an approach, try to do that turnaround jump tech. will help you a lot. Um, but again, down back air has a ton of potential as a wolf aerial as well, but it's probably my least used for whatever reason. Just because his, his aerials in general are so good. So, um, And then... So... That's basically Wolf's aerials in a nutshell, and I started to explain his combo game to you guys. What you need to remember at this point is dash attack. Um, Wolf actually has one of the best dash attacks in the game, in my opinion, because it continues combos amazingly well. Uh, as you can see, Wolf gets a little boost as soon as he does it, so I actually, you can't run very short distance and do the dash attack because he gets such a little boost when he actually puts the dash attack out. That's literally the minimum distance you can do a dash attack. So once you get used to that, once you get used to that little boost, you can continue combos so well with dash attack. It's actually kind of kind of insane how often you can follow up a combo that otherwise might have seemed like they didn't have enough hits done when they're just like slightly above the ground. Let's hit, say you hit them with the shine at like 10, 20%. They're slightly above the ground in front of you. You can just come out with a dash attack when no other move would be able to combo. So, um, this dash attack is super fast, really good for continuing combos. Knocks them at a great follow-up angle. Um, it's overall just an amazing, amazing combo continuer. It's a pretty good anti-air as well, and sometimes a good combo starter. You need to be careful with it though, because it is unsafe. If they if they make you whiff or if they shield it, then you can definitely get punished for it. So don't don't go too crazy starting combos or leading in with this as an approach. Um, I sometimes do that when I'm playing on autopilot and end up getting punished for it really hard. So try to avoid doing that. Try to use dash attack 80 to 90 percent of the time as a combo continuer only, rather than as an anti-air combo starter. Um, like I said, it can work for those other options, but it's not super safe. Using it as a combo continuer is really uh, where you get your mileage out of that move. Um, so that's Wolf's dash attack. Let's talk about the rest of his ground moves real quick. His jabs are actually really good. He has a really good 1-2-3 that will often, uh, almost always combo into itself if one of the moves starts connecting. And it has a pretty decent knockback. Uh, Surprisingly, a lot of the times I'll set up edge guards just off a, a triple triple jab or something like that. Um, and the, even just the regular jab has pretty good range on it, as you can see. Um, and then we also have his down tilt. Down tilt is a really good combo continuer for when they're on the ground or just in front of you in some way. It pops them up right above your head, basically. Um, up tilt is another great combo continuer for that exact same purpose. It's kind of like Fox and Falco's up tilt, just with uh, not nearly as amazing hitbox. That, like that hitbox won't won't beat a bunch of aerials coming in on top of you necessarily. But to continue combos, it's it's actually great, especially against uh, faster falling characters in general. 
you can see it, it comes out pretty quick and ends pretty has a pretty low cooldown so um so that's his uh down tilt and up tilt we also have his forward tilt and this actually has a property where when you connect it there's like a small like uh screen freeze and then the second hit comes out um it's kind of weird they kept that in from brawl um but forward tilt is also good it has pretty good knockback has that multi-hit which can sometimes catch people off guard um i don't use a ton of forward tilt situationally though it's good um and then let's move into his smashes which are actually all really good as well um forward smash anyone that knows wolf in brawl or this game at all has seen this move a ton of times really really good because it covers such range uh wolf actually moves his hitbox through the animation so a lot of the times when you would be able to be punished if you were like let's say marth putting out a forward smash marth's forward smash has a ton of range right but then he stays in the same spot um after doing it so if it's unsafe then he can get punished pretty hard wolf a lot of the times will move himself into a safe position by doing the forward smash so even if it whiffs or uh or gets shielded he oftentimes does not get punished for it. That being said, it is very punishable, and if your opponent's used to it, or if you do not get the right positioning afterwards, then you can get punished extremely hard for it. He clearly has a lot of uh, cooldown at the end there where he's just sitting there for a second, so definitely don't. This move is not super abusable or spammable at high level. At low level, it definitely is. But uh, yeah, it's super good. One thing to keep, keep in mind is... Uh, a lot of the times, especially when someone is shielding, and maybe the first hit shield pokes or something like that, a lot of the times with this move, you'll see uh, one hit connect, and basically the opponent just gets pushed slightly, but then Wolf actually moves past them before the next hit connects, and Wolf ends up on the other side of the opponent. Um, I feel like if you see that situation come up, 90% of the time you can just put out a shine, and the opponent will not have a... Have reacted in time to prevent it so if you do a forward smash connect with part of it but then end up on the other side of your opponent usually just put out a shine and that'll cover your bases so again guys forward smash really good really good for edge guarding as well it won't quite hit um below the stage so if they sweet spot it won't connect but if they miss their sweet spot then it does hit below a little bit um i'll talk about comboing into wolf side b soon just trying to take it um move from the basics into the more advanced stuff so that is wolf forward smash um again great great move uh not necessarily um the move that i always end up getting my kills with simply because uh wolf has such great kill options in general and forward smash has a little bit worse knockback than some of the other kill options but i do end up getting a lot of kills with forward smash for sure as well as a lot of damage and uh just a useful move overall so then we have down smash down smash is actually amazing uh it's probably wolf's single most reliable kill move i would say um the front comes out almost instantaneously and then the back comes out a little bit afterward has pretty good recovery considering uh it's like a, a multi-hit move front and behind uh he's, he's able to do it again pretty quickly so this is uh, definitely one of Wolf's best kill options by far, and I highly recommend it to any, especially beginner Wolf players. Um, at higher percents, when you get into like the 80 to 100 range, oftentimes, especially if you bring a character down with the Nair, like you carry them down with you in the Nair, you can combo into down smash. So keep that in mind. That's generally speaking not a guaranteed combo, but once you get to higher percents, it can become a, a combo for sure. Um, so again, down smash might be Wolf's single best KO move overall, but uh, it's definitely his best ground KO move um, easily. So keep that in mind. That's going to be one of your best KO options as a Wolf player is down smash. Um, next we have up smash. Up smash works exactly like Wolf's up air in the sense that they get knocked in a different direction depending on where you hit them. If you want it to be a, a strong off the top kill move, you got to hit him uh, in the front when he's he's on the way up with the up smash. But the way I actually like to use up smash is as an interesting edge guard catching them with the back. When you catch them with the back, you have to be facing away from them, but um, they actually go at a very, very uh, 
shallow angle off the stage, uh, like to the side. And oftentimes that can make an amazing edge guard. Like your opponent's recovering onto the stage behind you. You just run this way and up smash, and you'll catch them with the back. So, actually, a really good edge guard. And shout out to East Coast Eddie for <laughs> telling me that way back in the day when I was first getting started with Project M. That uh, it's a really good edge guard. Pretty good. Uh, tactic in general, just that runaway up smash because of the way the hitbox ends up working usually works out for you pretty well. Um, and so I think that's all of Wolf's. A moves. So let's talk B moves. Uh, I already discussed Shine in pretty, pretty extensive detail. Um, some of the properties are exactly the same as Fox and Falco's. Starts on frame one, obviously, you can jump cancel it instantly, but Wolf Shine can actually be crouch canceled. Um, that's something to keep in mind for sure. Fox and Falco's shines cannot be crouch canceled, so they can throw it out at lower percent with a lot less fear of getting retaliated on. Um, Wolf does have to worry about that a little bit. That's why, though, I almost always start any kind of pressure string with a down air. If I do the down air, then they, they don't crouch cancel it, and then the shine will work and go from there, so. Um, but yeah, the, the key difference, uh, aside from the crouch cancel thing, is that uh, they go slightly up and slightly in front of Wolf Shine. Um, so you just have to get used to that adjustment when comboing with Wolf. Um, not quite the same as comboing with Falco, but his his extremely versatile aerials give him the opportunity to capitalize on a lot more situations, despite the fact that his shine might send them at a at a weirder angle sometimes. So, and uh, I do I do want to say that Wolf's shine is also bigger than Fox and Falco's. Just has a slightly bigger hitbox. Maybe not Fox's, but definitely Falco's. So that's a uh, that's uh, definitely working in Wolf's favor as well. Um, so that's basically Wolf Shine in a nutshell. You can use it very similarly to Falco's Shine uh, is a good way to think about it if you're just starting off. But it definitely has its own unique properties and you'll get used to them as you play Wolf more. So now we have his Neutral B, uh, aka the Laser. Now, if you do it on the ground, it has a really long recovery. Uh, basically, this laser used to travel really slow, like a Sonic Room in, in versions before 3.5, but they, they, in my opinion, gave Wolf a great buff by making this laser faster. The Sonic Room idea is cute and everything, but uh, I feel like it doesn't actually hold up that well in a competitive Smash environment. Like, the, the lasers weren't as useful as, as I would have hoped um, prior to 3.5, but with this speed boost, uh, they definitely get way more useful. And of course, the thing that you probably noticed is that you can Waveland lasers. Uh, that definitely makes a huge difference for Wolf. I would recommend any starting Wolf players get this uh, Waveland down as soon as you can. It's a little bit tricky, and you want to do it as late as possible so that the laser is as close to the ground as possible. That was kind of a perfect one um, with the laser that close to the ground. Because if you wait too long, then you it'll be past the point where you can do the Waveland. And the wave land won't come out at all, and you'll get, just get the laggy landing, as you're seeing it happen a few times to me. So that's something I need to work on myself. But uh, you can do really cool applications with it, like you can uh, ledge jump into a wave land laser. See that? That's a great approach. You can actually <laughs> ledge jump and then wave land back with the laser, which is kind of funny. Uh, unless you die, because you're terrible. I'm, I'm not the best at wave landing these lasers. I'm trying to get better at it because they're so much better in Project M. I haven't sat down and practiced it enough, but uh, you definitely should do that if you're a Wolfman in Project M. So, but yeah, uh, that wave land definitely gives you a lot of options. You can come in and approach behind your laser better if you wave land forward. You can retreat and, uh, and wave land back repeatedly. Um, you can do stuff like that, like where you turn around laser right before the ledge and then wave land back down onto the ledge. Again, uh, none of this stuff is super easy. Um, the, the input is a little bit tight as far as wolf laser goes. It's not, it's nothing hard if you're good at technical melee stuff though. So, 
Um, so that is Wolf's neutral B. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that only. Oh wait, up B. Standard up B. Uh, this up B actually starts a lot faster than Fox and Falco's. Like as you can see right there, Wolf doesn't have nearly that long of the fire burning start animation. Obviously, Wolf doesn't have fire, but. Um, so that's a little bit better. It doesn't have quite the same range as Fox's. Um, you can ar arguably uh, hug the wall a little bit better due to the, the angle. I don't know. It's a, it's nothing super special as far as an up B goes. It's just a, a recovery recovery move. As far as using it as an attack, not very useful. You can occasionally do stuff like spike them if you hit them at a downward angle. That actually will spike them technically with Wolf's up B or Meteor maybe. But it's not very strong either way. So yeah, it's a solid recovery move. So, okay, I wanted to save the best for last. We have Wolf's Side B. AKA the former Anna Gems combo, AKA the Quest combo. Um, so, let's talk all about this Side B. Basically, Wolf's Side B um, acts in kind of a similar movement as Fox and Falco's, where they zip to the side really fast. But Wolf has always had an angle on his, a slightly upward angle, I would say like in the 30 degree range, something like that. Um, so instead of going straight, he goes at a slightly upward angle. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, something a lot of people might not realize is that I actually, in my brief time in the PM development team, I suggested a change that was implemented for Wolf where if you input the side B and then hold up or down, you can actually slightly alter that angle to go from, let's say if, if the normal angle is 30 degrees, if you hold down, that becomes like 22 degrees or so. And if you hold up, that becomes like 38 degrees or so. It's like a seven or eight degree difference on the angle. So you can very slightly alter that angle. Um, it definitely helps for recovery purposes when you're sweet spotting. That was a high one. Like, as you can see, I'm going, like, way above that. But if I hold down, right there, I sweet spot it. So, keep that in mind, y'all. Um, and then, this that's speaking of it as just a recovery move. Uh, he can also shorten it, like Fox and Falco, but he only has three lengths, which would be the super short. This is the super short. And then we got the medium. That's the medium. Oh, that was a super short again on accident. Uh, I think that was the medium. That's the super short, that's the medium, and then we have the regular full length. So only three lengths compared to Fox and Falco's four. Um, but if you think about it, with that shortened plus this slight angle change, you can get a lot of different uh, moves um, out of, a lot of different positions out of where you end up with your side beat, for sure. Um, and so for those of you that don't know, when you connect with this side B, the very end of it, you actually get your jump back. Um, and so this has led to me being an idiot and uh, basing my entire playstyle on landing risky side B <laughs> to get early KOs. It's also extremely strong if you sweet spot it like that. Uh, it can probably kill lighter characters starting as early as 70 or 80. If they're near the top, especially, um, and yeah, uh, it's obviously super fun to use. Um, and I'm gonna see if I can combo into it real quick just to demonstrate how that works. Oh, I missed. So there it was. As you saw, since I sweet spotted that side B, I was able to actually recover. That time I knew it wouldn't connect, so I shortened it on purpose so I wouldn't die. Ah. Uh, but yeah, so um, that to me is honestly what makes Wolf so much fun, is that side B. And being able to set up into the most ridiculous kill combos with the side B off the edge and stuff like that. As I said, uh, with the different angles and the shortens, you can definitely get a ton of different setups where that side B will work. A lot of them are very risky, obviously. 
But let's talk about some of the actual more reliable um, side B setups. Welcome to this game, watch stop bobbing. Um, some of the more reliable side B setups include just shine. Um, and this shine, I would say all these side B setups start working in the 60 to 80% range. So that's when you should start looking for it. Um, shine is kind of just the, the, the no brainer setup. The thing about it is shine has very low hit stun. Um, so you kind of have to preemptively most of the time put out the side B. You pre you do your shine and then you immediately jump out and put out your side B and then you try to line it up if, if necessary with the side the angles and the shortens. Um, if you you know accidentally if they didn't go where you ex expected them to, then you might have to adjust accordingly. If you know it's not going to work regardless, then you can try to shorten it in time. But again, that's why uh, it's a little bit risky to go for shine side B, namely when the it's in a situation where for it to connect they would have to be off the stage if they're not going to be off the stage regardless then you can definitely go for it a lot more often um but like i said it's one of the riskier setups even though it's like the bread and butter setup probably shine to side b it's one of the riskier ones as well because of the lack of hit stun on the shine which actually makes in my opinion the single best side b setup in the whole game will be down air um, and that's when you down air them into the ground and bounce them up. A lot of people will DI really far away. And then you have kind of all day to line up your shine because of the amount of hit stun. Damn it. Line up your side B, rather, because of the amount of hit stun. Uh, he stays in hit stun forever. You, had time, you saw I had time right there to just run over and line up my side B. Um, and, and a lot of the times you can also just do it off the ground as well, which requires less lining up on your part. So, uh... Doing it off of down air is definitely the way to go, for sure, guys. Um, other setups, there's other setups as well. I mean, you can hit it randomly off of any move, really. But uh, up air, up air, a lot of the times can lead to a side B. But that's another move where the hit stun is a little bit shorter, so you have to be pretty damn certain that you're going to be good to go. <sighs> Get owned, me. So yeah. Um, those are pretty much the best side B setups, um, and I would say down air is the single best one, um, but shine is also a great one, and then up air is probably a little bit below those on the totem pole. And then other moves situationally as well. So, so yeah guys, that's pretty much our breakdown of all of Wolf's moves. Um, as far as how to play Wolf in general, I mean... There's many different styles of wolf that are possible. You can play a very defensive wolf where you use a ton of lasers, a lot of retreating bears and stuff like that. I personally play a very aggressive wolf where I go in all the time and I, I don't use too many lasers except when I try to cover my approach with them. And I just try to go in, get some shield pressure started. As soon as I open them up with a down air or a shine, I get the combo game going. And wolf has such a versatile combo game that I'm usually end up able to end up continuing the combo pretty much regardless of uh, of how they di. And then yeah, so I mean I, that's just how I personally love to play Wolf is get get those combos in, get get the damage racked up, and then ideally try to finish into a side B combo. But also you can try to finish into like a fair or a down smash or a forward smash. Wolf has a lot of great reliable KO options. As well as a lot of uh, good um, combo options, obviously, as I've spent most of the tutorial discussing. If Wolf did have a weakness, I would say it's his recovery. Um, in 3.5, they did make it so that Wolf's side B will consume his second jump regardless. So if I get hit off at a low percent, for example, and I try to side B immediately, back in 3.0, if they, if they edge guard that side B, then I would still have my second jump left. And that made his recovery significantly better, in my opinion back then because it gave you that option of putting out the early side B. Now if I put out an early side B and you get hit out of it, then my second jump's already gone even if I didn't second jump prior. And that means that if I get hit out of my side B, I'm probably dead because then I'm forced to up B and my opponent has a super easy edge guard opportunity. So yeah, uh, that's definitely Wolf's biggest weakness is his recovery. Um, quick tip for Wolf's Wolf players that do have trouble recovering, 
when you first get hit off the stage before you do anything, namely second jump, that's going to be the first thing you do 95% of the time when you get hit off the stage. Before you second jump, try just shining. If you just shine, weirdly, you get some of your momentum back. Like, you are you get some momentum. I sometimes get carried toward the stage a little bit, and then I second jump. And sometimes I don't even need to use an up or side B at that point, um, despite looking like I was really far away before. So keep that in mind for recovery, guys, and that'll help you in that uh, recovery department a lot, since that's probably Wolf's weakest department. Um, can be hard to sweet spot with him and stuff like that sometimes, so... But yeah, guys, um, that's pretty much Wolf in a nutshell. I really hope that you guys found some stuff useful. Um, and I will try to put this on YouTube as well so that people can check it out there.